This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, let's do a bit more on inventory valuation. We've already said in the last session that we always value inventory at the lower of cost and net realizable value. And of course, usually in real life, most items will be valued at cost. There is a problem, though, in that what was the cost? Now, it may seem silly, but suppose I'm buying goods all year from a supplier. Perhaps I, sell, I buy and sell pens. I've been buying pens all year, thousands of pens. Uh, but because of inflation, the cost of them has been going up. So at the beginning of the year, I was only paying a dollar each. By the end of the year, they were costing five dollars each. And at the end of the year, perhaps I have a hundred pens left. Well, the problem is, are those old pens that cost a dollar, or are they new ones that cost five dollars? How are we going to decide how much the ones we've got left actually cost? Well, there are four approaches for the exam that you need to be aware of. The first, the most obvious, is called unit cost. And as is in the notes, this is page 63, incidentally. If the price is actually marked on each unit, if each pen has on it how much we actually paid, then no problem. We can actually look at them each, uh, look at each of them, uh, and work out the cost. Possible? Most items not that likely. Another way, uh, and this is D on page 63, it says selling price less an estimated profit margin. Now we said for unit cost, if, if the original cost is actually marked on the pen, no problem, add them up. But of course more likely if we're a shop, maybe there are prices marked on the pen, but they're the prices that we are actually going to charge. Well, what is allowed, if you want, is to take the prices that we're charging, the selling price, and deduct an estimated margin. So, for instance, if on average we make 20% profit on everything we sell, take the selling prices and simply deduct 20%. Now, those two methods be aware of, but in fact you would have no arithmetic in the exam. It's just possible it could be mentioned uh, in a question that's checking you on statements. The numbers, the two that you must be happy with, are B and C. FIFO, first in, first out, and average cost. And so to explain both of them, can you turn to page 64, example 5, And um, I'll use this example to explain these two different methods of valuing. Have a quick look with me. On the 1st of November, we had 300 units of finished goods valued at $12. And during November, you'll see there there's a list of purchases. Uh, and we, the price we were paying kept increasing. We bought some at $12.50, some at $14, some at $15. During November, we sold goods. You have a list there of the sales. And our job is to work out the value of any closing inventory. Well, first of all, let's work out how many units are left. So, this is just November. So, at the start of November, we had an opening inventory. Uh, 300 units. Forget values for the moment. We're just looking at units. During November... We bought some. There were three purchases of uh, 400 each, so we bought 1,200. But of course, we had sales during November. 500, 400, 100 in total, 1,000. So it must mean that at the end of November, 
15, with 500 units left. So whatever happens, that's how many units are left. Our problem, of course, is how much did they cost us? Were they very old units and only cost $12? Were they very new units and cost $15? That's the problem. Well, the first of these two approaches is FIFO or first in, first out. Sorry, first in, first out. And what we assume here is that whenever we sell any, we're always selling the oldest units first. A bit like a supermarket. Um, they always put the oldest uh, milk at the front of the counter. And unless you're awkward and stick your hand behind, you're always buying the oldest. Anyway, we assume we always sell the oldest items first, and as a result, any closing inventory is always the most recent purchases. And so this is actually very easy to apply. We have 500 left. Those 500 left must be the most recent purchase. So look at the list of purchases. The most recent purchase was on the 25th of November and they were costing $15. The only trouble is, of course, we only bought 400 and so we'd assume all... Uh, sorry, and we've got 500 left. So the 500 we've le got left must be all of those 400 which cost us $15. However, the other 100 units must have come from the previous purchase which was on the 20th of November and so they will only have cost us 14 and so the total value are 500 units 400 of them cost 15 which is 6,000 100 of them cost 14 and there 7,400 is the value of the inventory so nice and easy uh, calculate how many units are left at the end. To value, go back to the most recent invoice, the most recent purchase. If there aren't enough, go to the one before, the one before, and so on, until you've accounted uh, for all the units. Uh, note here, the selling price is irrelevant because uh, throughout the selling price is more than cost. And remember, we always value the lower of cost and realizable value. If the selling price were lower, then clearly we'd have to value at the lower price. Anyway, that's first in, first out. The other approach is a little bit more complicated, and it's called weighted average, or simply average cost. And now again, we have 500 units left, and as it says, we're going to value at an average price. But, as will become, I think, fairly obvious as we work through it, we can't simply take the costs and work out a straight average. I'm afraid it's a little bit more complicated than that. We have to work through in date order. Watch carefully and see what happens. First of all, on the 1st of November... We had 300 units in inventory and the total cost of those 300, well they were $12 each, it was 3,600. And what we're going to do as you'll see is work through in date order, transaction by transaction and keep working out the cost. So watch carefully. When you've done one or two, I think it becomes very obvious. The first thing that happens, keep checking the dates, but I think it's the 10th of November when we buy some more. We bought another 400. They cost $12.50 each, which is a total 400 at $12.50 is 5,000. 
And so at that stage, we had 700 units at a total cost of 8,600. The next thing that happens is on the 14th of November, we sell some. How many? We sell 500. And so, of course, we've 200 left. What we do here, though, is instead of saying, oh, those 500, they were bought on the 10th or they were bought on the 1st, well, we just use an average. We say, immediately prior to the sale, we had 700 units costing 8,600. And so at that stage, the average cost per unit, 8,600 over 700, is how much? $12, if I keep to the nearest uh, cent, $12.29 per unit. So immediately before the sale, the average cost per unit of those I had is $12.29. All right, we sell 500 with 200 left. Well, those 200 will value at that average cost of 12.29. So the 200 left are worth 2458. What's the next thing that happens? Well, on the 20th of November, uh, we buy another 400 and we pay at $14. So the extra 400 will have cost us 5,600. Uh, at that stage, we've 600 units in stock. The total cost, 8,058. Next, ah, 21st November, we sell some. Uh, we sell 400. We've 200 left. Well, again, whenever we sell any, we work out the average cost immediately prior to sale, and any left will be valued at that. So immediately before the sale, uh, we had 600 units worth 8 at 058, so the average cost had gone up to $13.43 per unit. We sold 400. The 200 left, therefore, will be valued at the average of 13.43, which is 2686. OK, well, I hope it's clear what's happening. Uh, by all means, finish off the last two yourself and then check. But of course, I'll carry on and work through it. So next is 25th of November. Buy more. Another 400, so we've 600 in total. And those 400 cost us $15, a total of 6,000. So the total value of the 600 is 8,686. Finally, on the 28th of November, sell some. We sell 100, so there's our 500 units left. We'll value at average, well, the average immediately before the sale. 8686 divided by 600. $14.49. And so, the 500 left will be valued at 1448.7240. And there we are. Now obviously, make sure you can do it both ways and check a question carefully. You've, almost certainly, you will get an inventory valuation question but check very carefully, do they require you to do it FIFO or average cost?
uh, practice it, but then apart, particularly with average costs where it takes longer, but apart from speed and making sure you don't make silly mistakes, uh, it's not a hard exercise. Uh, finally though, the accounting standard allows you to value in any of these ways, and these last two, if we were valuing FIFO, then we end up with a stock val uh, an inventory valuation of 7400 whereas if we are valuing using average cost we'd end up with a value of only 7240 now i hope clearly if you have a different inventory value you'll end up with a different profit look back at um Ooh, the first uh, s section of this chapter but with different inventory values you'll have different cost of sales you'll have different profit and do be happy with one thing that higher closing inventory will give you a higher profit And similarly, lower closing inventory will result in a lower profit. Now do convince yourself, don't just write that down. If you need to make up a few little examples, go back to the um, ooh, example 3 in this chapter. Change the inventory figure. And if you increase it, you'll end up with a higher profit. If you reduce it, you'll end up with a lower profit convince yourself but then do learn it for the exam it's something they often test however although year by year the method you use would end up giving a different profit provided of course that we use the same method each year then in the long term it'll make no difference because the closing inventory this year will be the opening inventory next year and the accounting standard says use either method but you must use the same method each year if you do change for any reason then there has to be a note explaining why you've changed and what the effect of the change has been on the profit okay we'll leave that there have a go at the test